Hey guys, welcome to Coding and Flow. In this tutorial, we will learn how to use the navigation component, which is an Android Jetpack library that makes handling navigation in our Android apps easier. It makes it very easy to uh, switch between different fragments. In the past, we had to do this manually in Kotlin code with Fragment Transaction Manager and this kind of stuff. It makes it easy to add these animations without a lot of hassle. We can send data between fragments in a type safe way. Whereas in the past, we would have to put that into bundle, then unpack it, then maybe it's not the correct type and our app would crash. And it also makes it easy to um, implement these common UI elements like a toolbar that you can see at the top, options menu, um, bottom navigation view or navigation draw, and connect that to our, to our navigation without much effort. It's very easy. And the navigation component also takes care of synchronizing all of that properly. So when we go to a screen that's not a top level destination, so not a starting screen, so to speak, we see this back button here. When we go back, this button turns into a draw icon. And we only have to connect this once. And then the navigation component takes care of synchronizing that. So uh, the right icons and right elements are shown at the right time. And also the back stack works properly. In this tutorial, we will cover pretty much everything you saw here in this example, including implementing bottom navigation view and navigation draw. We will also cover a little bit more. However, this is not an advanced tutorial. We will not cover topics like implementing multiple backstacks because this is very complex and you can learn this better by looking into Google's very own samples. They have a, a basic navigation component sample and an advanced one. You can also take a look into the documentation. This tutorial here is more directed towards beginners. So it's meant to get you started with the navigation component and use it to navigate between different screens and add some cool UI elements to your app. And to use this library, we have to add some Gradle dependencies. I will put a link to this project here on GitHub into the description box below. And then you have two choices. You can either just copy the dependencies if you already have a project and you want to implement navigation component there. Or if you want to follow along with this tutorial step by step, you can also clone the whole repository. And for each part of this video series, there will be a separate GitHub branch with the corresponding code at the end of this video. And I will also put a link for each branch um, into the description box under each video for each particular part. Okay, so in the build.gradle file with module colon app, we have to add these two dependencies here, which you can see at the bottom. This is a variable placeholder, which we put into the other build.gradle file. You will see this in a moment. We also have to add this part here, which enables Java 8 features. We will not use Java in this tutorial. We use Kotlin, but we still have to add this. Otherwise, it will not work properly. And we have to add the SafeArx plugin, which is another add-on to the navigation component which is recommended because it enables us to send data between fragments in a type safe way, in a compile time safe way. Without this plugin, we have to put data into bundles, which can crash at runtime if we don't use them properly. This is why we uh, should use the SafeArx plugin. So you have to add this line here at the top, not these two, this one. The other three should already be in your, in your project. They are added to uh, projects by default. And then in the other build.gradle file, the one with project, first of all, this is the placeholder for the version number. You have to add this up here. And then we have to add this line, which is the SafeArx plugin and the other line in the other file is the code that enables this plugin. All right, as said, you can copy this from the link in the description box below or just clone the whole repository. As I already said, in this tutorial, we will use Kotlin. Java needs a slightly different setup and different dependencies. If you want to use Java, you have to look into the documentation. And also the code we will write in this tutorial will be different in Java, not only because Kotlin and Java are different languages, but also because Kotlin has extension functions, which Java doesn't have. So we will use Kotlin here. Again, if you want to use Java, you have to look into the documentation. They are similar, but not the same. And what I've already pre what I've also prepared are these 
animation files here. You should also copy them from the link below. And to create this NM folder, you have to right click on res and create a new Android resource directory. Here you choose NM at the top and then you just copy these files in. Those animations files for the, for the fragments. And in drawable, I have prepared these two vector graphics here. You can copy them or you can right click and create a vector asset like this. Which one you pick doesn't really matter. You also have to use at least Android Studio 3.3 to use the navigation component. But if you watch this tutorial now or in the future, it's unlikely that you use a lower version. And if you use your own project, you have to make sure that it's using the Android X dependencies, not the old support libraries. Otherwise, this will not be compatible. And the app we built in this project is not functional. It looks like a real app, but this is not actually a real login screen. It's just a dummy. Because the point is to see how we can use the navigation component without the other stuff that would make this tutorial very complicated. And the philosophy behind the navigation component is that we should generally only use a single activity in our app, or at least in a small app, and the different destinations, the different screens, are fragments. Because fragments are more lightweight, they are more flexible, and the activity is basically just a container for these different fragments, where we can swap them out. And the activity also contains these UI elements that are shared between different fragments. So for example, you can see that the toolbar up here doesn't change. It doesn't actually animate with the fragment. The same for the bottom navigation viewer. And the draw is also visible on all screens. And those elements live in the activity, but what you can see here in the middle are fragments. And another cool thing about the navigation component is that it gives us such a nice graph like you can see here. Now the graph we will build will not be as colorful as this one because we don't have these nice screens. But nevertheless, it really helps visualizing the different destinations in your app and the different actions that lead to these destinations. So this was an introduction. In the next video, we will start setting up the navigation component and our navigation graph. So don't forget to subscribe and take care.